News 4 San Antonio at 5, we're here for you. Changes to inspections. We'll break down the new agreement reached between Governor Abbott and Nueva Leon's governor and what Abbott says has been the goal all along. I'm Jonathan Martinez at the Texas-Mexico border taking a closer look at a protest by truck drivers that's leading to a bottleneck here at the border. And I'm Don Harris. It is win or go home for the Spurs tonight. We're live in New Orleans. Well, we'll get you ready for the play-in game as we're all over the Spurs. But first, good evening. Thank you so much for joining us at 5. I'm Robert Price. And I'm Simone D'Alba. Our top story tonight, trucks backed up at the border as enhanced screenings ordered by Governor Abbott are underway. Our team is covering every angle of this developing story for you, from the long lines at the border to how it could impact our produce buying habits. Let's begin our team coverage with News 4 San Antonio's Joe Galley asking the governor what prompted this about face on policy. Joe. Robert Simone, the changes that were made today really are only going to impact the ports of entry coming into Laredo. It's still a big question if this is going to have a significant impact on the other ports of entry coming into the state of Texas. During the press conference today, mm. Governor Greg Abbott and Nueva Leon Governor Samuel Alejandro Garcia Sepulveda signed an agreement stating that semi trucks will be inspected deeper into that Mexican state away from the border to alleviate the clog of ports of entry between the two states. Now, during this past week, Governor Abbott has has been under fire for this policy from business leaders and from political opponents saying that it was bad for trade, bad for business, and was adding to more inflation. Here's what I asked him. Governor Abbott, Joe Galley, News 4 San Antonio. What would you say to your critics that say the policy that you put forward last week was a publicity stunt that blew up in your face and now you got to double back? So the, the, the goal all along has been to in, ensure that people understood the consequences of an open border. Uh, and the Texas isn't going to tolerate it anymore. Uh, and uh, we knew that as soon as we uh, uh, did what we did on the border, uh, that we would be contacted uh, by officials in Mexico because uh, it, it is uh, a very high price to pay uh, with regard to uh, what is going on on the border. Uh, and sometimes it just takes action like that uh, to spur people sitting down and working things out like the way that they are beginning to work out. And it led to today by us making history. Governor Garcia Sepulveda says police officers have already begun to search semi trucks in his state. And he says he looks forward to continually working with Texas to secure the border. Governor Abbott also said that he has been in contact with other governors in Mexican states with the Me that border Texas to try to implement similar policies there. Once again, the governor was unable to tell us if DPS officers were able to get any additional arrests, or seize more drugs or save people from human trafficking this past week with the added security measures. Robert. Thank you very much, Joe. We are getting new video in. The view from World Car Sky 4. Hundreds of 18-wheelers there waiting at the border. Right now you are looking at the far Reynosa International Bridge. That's where we find News 4 San Antonio's Jonathan Martinez, who has been in far about 25 minutes outside of McAllen. Jonathan, what are you seeing? You know, Robert, we can tell you a number of truckers have set up a blockade on the other side of the International Bridge, and that, of course, is creating quite the bottleneck and trouble, really, for both sides of the border. Developing in just the last, ha last half hour to an hour, though, we can tell you that some of those trucks are finally able to leave the United States and head back into Mexico. That, of course, just developing. Nevertheless, though, major bottleneck here and long wait times to cross in other places. They, of course, are protesting Governor Greg Abbott's decision to step up inspections that he says are to combat cartels from smuggling drugs or people across the border. As a result, though, truckers have stopped commercial traffic, at least for now, in both directions. And that's leading to long wait times of several hours, in some cases, at other ports of entry. In fact, as truck drivers reroute to other places or even states, many now have concerns about the possibility of higher prices because of the supply chain disruptions. Some also worry about truckers possibly running out of fuel during the waits and reroute routes and produce going to waste. Brokers we spoke with expressing concerns about what's happening and the time it's taking for truck drivers to cross. There's a large consumption of, uh, of produce and other commodities. There, there might not be enough uh, to, to meet the demand. And in, at the same time, what's going to happen? Prices are going to go up. Uh, the price is going to go up for everything. The average time right now went from anywhere between two to four hours on its busiest day to 12 to 14, 14 plus hours. 
Now, it's still unclear just how long truck drivers plan to protest, but what is certain, it's already having an impact. We are reporting live from the Texas-Mexico border in Far Texas. I'm Jonathan Martinez. Simone, we'll send things back over to you. All right, Jonathan, thank you. Well, those border issues could now be heading west. As we bring in News 4 San Antonio's Matt Roy, who's been digging into this story. Matt, what are your sources telling you about how the border issue is evolving? Good evening. Yeah, Simone, good evening. I spoke with a couple of Border Customs brokers down in McAllen, and they said the problem is getting pretty bad, as you just heard from Jonathan. So bad that, that the truck drivers are starting to head to western ports. And by west, I don't mean Laredo or even El Paso. I mean Nogales, Arizona west. So I called a few Customs brokers down in Nogales, and they confirmed it. They've seen an influx of uh, produce trucks that would usually be traveling through Texas, now through their ports. Simone? Oh, Matt, I wanted to talk about, we can see you're at the produce terminal here in San Antonio. Can you give us some insight in terms of how they're handling this and how it's affecting us here at home? Yeah, Simone, I actually spoke to many of the distributors here at the produce terminal, and they wouldn't really go on camera, but they did give me a lot of information saying that this problem is getting really bad for them. They said that by the time a lot of the produce is getting here, it's either going bad or pretty close to going bad. Uh, lettuce is one of the key problems where they can't get it and then it can't go to the stores, but the ones really being affected here is you, the consumer, and the restaurants, because now I'm being told that they're starting to panic buy or hedge like many people did at the beginning of the pandemic so they can continue to serve San Antonians like us. Then we have cost of goods, cost of commodities, cost of delivery. Everything is increasing. Between labor, gas, and cost of goods, owning a restaurant is getting expensive. And this border tension is making things worse. People don't have to go out to eat. So we don't just increase our price of menu costs just because our prices go up. We have to absorb some of those as we, as much as we can until we get to the point, the breaking point. Because of the crisis, restaurants and consumers are beginning to be unsure whether they can get their hands on products. So? You have guys who don't typically buy 300 or something, they're buying six or 900 because they're, they can't take a chance on not having the product. Luis Barrios calls this hedging. We see uh, price of fruits and vegetables going up, so we will hedge by, by buying and, and our purveyors, uh, God bless those purveyors, they help us with this, uh, with this uh, strategy. Nando Gonzalez says this can have some mixed outcomes though. It's good and bad because we're dealing with a perishable commodity. Barrios says with costs rising in all aspects, small operators feel like they're drowning. Most small independent operators die in anonymity. Uh, you pass by a thousand of these little restaurants every day, you never notice them. So when they're gone, you won't notice them. But yes, it disproportionately hurts the smaller operator. Matt Roy, News 4, San Antonio. Thank you. We want to go back now to Jonathan Martinez in FAR. He's been talking to some of those truck drivers about these long delays. Jonathan, what are they telling you? You know, Robert, they're pretty frustrated about it. We can tell you the location that we're at right now, ordinarily there'd be a boatload of trucks coming in this direction, entering the United States. That, of course, is not the case right now. With the backup here at the border impacting items coming in and out of the U.S., truck drivers who've been stuck for hours are also pretty frustrated about everything. In fact, we spoke to Samuel Hernandez, who is a truck driver who got here on Friday and says it took him several hours to cross, but now he can't get back to Mexico because of things being closed down here at the Far Reynosa International Bridge, at least temporarily. He tells us he's since had to get a hotel room, although he wasn't planning to stay any extra nights, and has even run out of clothes because of the unexpected stay in the here, here in the States. He says he's frustrated about the situation and hopes that things will soon be resolved. I've been here since 10 a.m. on Monday until right now. And when are we going to open it? Who knows? We have just to keep waiting. What else can we do? And then our money runs out. And again, back out here live, if there is any good news, we are seeing trucks finally starting to head back into Mexico. We're not sure if Hernandez is going to be heading out anytime soon. We did talk with some of the other truck drivers who tell us that they've since reported reports of entry, but they say as a result, that is creating several hours long bottlenecks in those locations as well. That is the very latest. We are reporting live from the Texas-Mexico border. We'll go ahead and send things back over to you, Melissa.
And at the live desk happening right now, we are also following reaction to what's happening at the border and beyond from Washington tonight. Let's take a live look right now, Washington, D.C. at the White House, where the White House press secretary calling Governor Abbott's inspections of trucks redundant and unnecessary. And we also want to show you some new video coming into our newsroom as the first migrants bust from Texas have arrived in Washington, D.C. This is video of the migrants arriving at Union Station, just a two-minute task taxi ride from the Capitol. Just last week, Governor Abbott announced he would start the voluntary busing of migrants to Washington and officials from Catholic Charities there are helping the migrants. So far, there's been no comment from the Department of Homeland Security or U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement. Robert. Thank you very much, Melissa. We will continue to follow this developing situation along the border for you. Keep you updated here on 4, online at news4sa.com and on our social media pages. Well, right now, the Spurs are playing the waiting game. Tonight's tip-off in New Orleans, not until 8.30, and the Spurs are chomping at the bit to get this thing going. One game to try and keep their season alive. Our Chase Shannon has made the trip to the Big Easy. He joins us live from New Orleans. Chase. Yeah, Don, it's do or die tonight here at the Smoothie King Center. And believe it or not, the Spurs are a perfect 2-0 in this building this season, trying to run that to 3-0 tonight in this play-in tournament game. And look who was at shoot-around this morning. Your favorite, Don, Manu Ginobili on hand. In the same city just a couple of weeks ago, he was named a member of the Hall of Fame's 2022 class. As for this game, a unique situation. Win, they're still alive and halfway to claiming the eighth seed in the Western Conference. Lose? Get ready for the draft lottery. Win or go home, how do you kind of approach that mentality when it's on the line tonight? Same thing. I mean, same same mindset, I feel like. You know, just go in, you know, play together as a team. And that's all we can do. Uh, we know if we try to do it by ourselves, we won't succeed. So I feel like with each other, I feel like we can we can accomplish anything. So I feel like as long as we play basketball how we've been playing, uh, as of recently, I think we'll be fine. And as we saw last night, the Minnesota Timberwolves beat the Los Angeles Clippers, so should the Spurs win this game tonight, it's off to L.A. Win that game, they're in the playoffs. We've got much more to talk about coming up a little later on in Sports, Don, but right now, live at Smoothie King Center, Chase Shannon, News for San Antonio. All right, thanks, Chase. And straight ahead, a check on the injury situation. Will the Pelicans have their two All-Stars at 100%? More on tonight's game, as Chase said, straight ahead. And the manhunt is over for that suspect in yesterday's subway attack in New York. How police tracked down the man accused of shooting 10 people. Making headlines, police in New York arrest a man in connection with yesterday's subway shooting. 62-year-old Frank James is in custody right now. Officials say a Crime Stoppers hotline tip directed police to his location. Officers say 33 shots were fired before the weapon jammed. Ten people were shot in the attack. All are expected to survive. Around the world, people are reacting to President Joe Biden accusing Moscow of genocide. The administration had avoided using the hard-to-prove label. But President Biden is doubling down, saying, Putin is trying to wipe out the idea of even being able to be Ukrainian. Ukraine's president is calling the genocide comments true words of a true leader. President Biden is now promising an additional $800 million in military aid to Ukraine, including weapons, ammunition, and helicopters. We will be right back. And happening right now, we are following a developing story after a woman was rescued after her car goes off of a cliff. We have some brand new video just coming into our newsroom. The car going off of a cliff in Los Angeles, traveling about 300 feet down into a canyon. Firefighters went down to the car and decided to bring in a helicopter to hoist that woman out. Now, park rangers saying that the 68-year-old woman in the car was alert and talking when they arrived. So that is the good news there and right now we're still waiting for information about her condition and how the car went off the cliff in the first place. Now your certified most accurate four zone weather with chief meteorologist Chris Sujan. All right, let's talk some weather. Man, we had the heat just roar back. Ooh, may, I, I mean, it's an April blast furnace mm -hmm. out there. Today is our hottest day so far this year. What do you call it sometimes? The San Antonio sauna. The San Antonio <laughs> sauna, the San Antonio blast <laughs> furnace. It it's, feels like, yeah. It's all hot weather related. Uh, yeah, so let's uh, talk about it with our four zone weather watchers and want to welcome Russell Annis. 
up into Rock Springs to our network. 85 degrees. He's got his weather station uh, set up. Kathy Wiederspan and Ingram, 87. Then you get the Robert Corbett in Alamo Heights, 95. Steve down in Jordanton is 100 degrees. There's Poteet at 99. And then in our eastern zone, cooking too with those temperatures. Martha Melkor out in the welder, 95 degrees. And when we look at the numbers for the day today, almost a record, 98. The record was 100 degrees, which is safe for another year. And you recall yesterday, we tied a record high. So two real intense days with the heat here in April. This is a little bit more typical middle of uh, going late June and July for us. There you have the World Car Weather Key View with the sunshine. How about 103? Catula right now, 98. Carrizo Springs. There's Pleasanton's official temperature at 101. And we started humid. It was really soupy this morning. And then as I was talking about yesterday, we were going to get a northwest breeze to pump in really low humidity, dry the air out. There's that breeze gusting 20 to about 25, occasionally around 30 miles an hour. That combination, that's fire weather. So we have the red flag warning in effect until uh, 8 o'clock. Now, skies are clear. There's all the commotion. Another day of severe weather crossing the Mississippi River Valley. You can see the state, though, is really settling down. So we do get a couple of really nice days. And they'll be a little bit cooler, too. In fact, in the morning tomorrow, low to mid-50s, you see our clear skies. This little batch of cloud cover may sort of overlap some of our western zone counties late morning into early afternoon. Otherwise, you can see it's a day of a lot of sunshine in San Antonio. Friday, the mugginess is coming back in. That gives us cloud cover, maybe a couple of little sprinkles or a little morning mist. And then we go into some sunshine in the afternoon. Both days are in the 80s. Here's Easter weekend. Saturday, I'm going to forecast a record high temperature of 96 in San Antonio. I'm not impressed with overnight rain chances Saturday night. Easter Sunday is another hot day in the mid-90s, but this frontal boundary, our next weather maker, looks like late day on Easter Sunday will trigger a few showers or a thunderstorm. It doesn't look like severe weather, but I'm going to put a rain chance in there for the back part of the day on Easter Sunday. 53 in the morning on your Thursday, 87 tomorrow. That's still warmer than normal, but that's a little bit more manageable and still with low humidity. 87 then for Friday. There's 96, again, a record. There's the record high of 95. 30% chance late day on Easter Sunday for a shower or a thunderstorm. And then there's another rain chance coming in middle of next week there on Wednesday. Now out west, 98 to 101 over the weekend. You do get a rain chance on Tuesday. Hill country, 80s next couple of days. The weekend, low 90s. There's that chance for a late day shower or thunderstorm Sunday. And here's our Eastern Zone extended forecast. Guys, over to you. Thank you, Chris. Don Harris joining us now. Don, for anyone who watched last night's game in Minnesota. Did these, you watch? I did. It was good. I saw them on the stands <laughs> cheering on the crowd. These play-in games have the intensity cranked up to 11. Yeah, it's it's here. Mm -hmm. It's playoffs. It's not playoffs, but it's here. Playoffs. And tonight we're going to see the Spurs in it. The Spurs, well, will they be on a plane tomorrow? They will. Either on their way home with the season over or on their way to LA to try and stay alive. We'll take you live to New Orleans for a preview of tonight's do or die game next. This is the Thomas J. Henry Sports Desk. Hey, tonight is the night. It's not quite the playoffs. But it's not the regular season either. The NBA play-in tournament is win or go home. And the Spurs will be looking to stay alive tonight in New Orleans. Now, last night, we saw the energy and the emotion as the Timberwolves held off the Clippers to take the seventh seed. Clippers, though, are still alive. They'll return home to L.A., and they will host the winner of tonight's game between the Spurs and the Pelicans. That is in the Big Easy, and that's where our Chase Shannon is as well. He joins us live from New Orleans with a preview. Chase? Yeah, Don, this Pelicans team has been really sharp since trading for C.J. McCollum in a blockbuster deal with Portland earlier this season. And when you pair him with Brandon Ingram, they really have something special. Ingram has missed 13 of their last 18 games, though, with a hamstring injury. But when he and McCollum have been in the lineup together, they are 8-2 since the All-Star break. Both are 22-plus points per game scorers, and needless to say, they will be tough for the Spurs to handle. Definitely, you, you just can't relax on them. Uh, they're they're always on a, as scores. They're they're always looking to get their shots off, and uh, they have so many uh, moves available to them. So uh, they're definitely a tough guard. But uh, uh, as a team, like that, that's how you have to have to stop them. It's not just going to be one guy. It's it's going to be everybody. It's going to take a, a whole collective. 
And yeah, Ingram expected to play tonight. And the Spurs, again, we've mentioned this several times these last couple of days previewing this game. Three and one against the New Orleans Pelicans this season. One and oh when McCollum and Ingram are both in the lineup. Even though those two combined for 58 points in that win for the Spurs. And that win came right here at Smoothie King Center. So maybe those two can get theirs and the Spurs can still come out on top. Live here in New Orleans, Chase Shannon, News 4 San Antonio. All right, thanks a lot, Chase. Much more from Chase coming up at 6 o'clock. The tip time is 8.30 tonight. We'll have the early highlights for you then. Complete coverage on News 4 San Antonio today coming up tomorrow morning. And remember, Doug McDermott will not play. All right, coming up at 6 o'clock, the Cowboys say they've got a historic announcement to make. And Jerry Jones is talking about the NFL draft. That's coming up at 6 o'clock. We'll be right back. Right now, our new reporting on the arrest of a suspect of that mass shooting on a New York City subway car, what led to his capture, and the new battle over a mask mandate on airplanes just extended as spring and summer travel heats up when we see you tonight. Coming up at 6, that trucker blockade at the Texas-Mexico border is being called a stunt by Democrats. We'll look into how big politics is playing out over this controversial policy. And on News 4's evening break, overhauling the system. What local advocates say needs to change about the state's child welfare system, including how your taxpayer dollars are spent. Lester mentioned heating up. He's talking about San Antonio. Really hot. And let me also mention, too, Oak Pile today mm. is the highest count of the oh, season at 17,000. I think it's actually got me down. And you I'm just a little me. bit. That's right. Oh, man. <laughs> Uh, and of course, April is the peak of Oak. Now, 87 the next couple of days, Easter weekend, record hot on Saturday. And you can see on Sunday, there's a chance late day for a shower. Right, time. so we're not imagining it. Allergies, heat, and yeah. full force. We can okay. use a car wash, too. Nightly News is next. See you at 6.